that's that's your cue. Um, you can that's read not your quote. creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's creepy. <laughs> Please start off our meeting with a reading from yeah. <laughs> uh, from our tome of knowledge. Yeah. Through language and instruction, humans create a knowledge base that compresses or binds many centuries of accumulated wisdom into the learning span of a single generation. We don't need to reinvent all knowledge anew every time, but we must at least provisionally believe that people of the past have something to teach us. And so I think that's true, but I also think that we do need to start rewriting our knowledge base that it's time we break free of our biology and really accept the progress we've made in society. You know, the, the, the things that are still lagging behind, but we should have progressed further than we have. Have the, the LGBTQ crowd now that we're embracing. We have... Um, you know, broken nuclear families. And, you know, in some ways we've embraced that, the single parenthood, um, even if it's still a bit taboo. We have mental health. Mental health is something that, you know, we're starting to change our minds about. We're starting to look at people with mental health issues less as, less stigmatized. And we're trying to integrate what we know about it with, you know, how our institutions run. We're changing our workspaces. We're, we're doing so much. And especially with technology having boomed the way it did. I, I wrote something, but. Well, I mean, I was thinking about this earlier. Just to start off with this, like, overview of what I think we should try to do with this group is one is to solidify the ground of where uh, and the ground would be the team human book and the the little basis of because it's kind of like this essential manual I guess <laughs> and but from from there once we solidify like the ground and bring about finding the others and initiating them within our group to see if they want to play. And once we, once we initiate people into the group, already the people that already are in the group are people that I know that I could play well with. <laughs> so uh, I'm stacking the deck early so that this uh, thing could survive and hopefully be good and fruitful. And then there, this, uh, hopefully this becomes a monthly thing where we commune, uh, collaborate, uh, brainstorm, pick each other's brains, maybe come up with a rough outline for, for the, for the month of what areas we want to explore. What areas do we think could be fun to create in? You know, there's, I have already done a lot of this own work on myself you know, creating the capsule of find the others, create the weird. What the world needs now is more visions and more types of visions. Um, protest, protest as a way of being. All these are, are clips and, and lack for a better word, memes that I've gotten from uh, the book or from the podcast. And also, too, I think, you know, as we move forward of going on with this of taken from the book, taken from the podcast. And then later, like, I had the poetic double dutch. So, like, those are, like, the ropes in which we play in. And then we jump in with our weird, which is kind of what already make is kind of advanced courses in bringing in her questions about uh, Gen X, uh, synchronicity, and all of that. But... <laughs> But for the time being, I think it's just laying the groundwork from what what Doug have, has already done. He recently, um, I talked to him via email, um, joined the group. So that's kind of interesting. And hopefully, you know, if we 
for me, it doesn't matter about like growing this, but uh, about like how deep and meaningful and fun we could have with these ideas. Um, basically, just building off of what I have done and um, creating more of the collective poetic expressions, uh, curry any visuals, or I don't want to limit anybody, but you know, everybody has their strong points and. Maybe that's a point where you jump in, but also to, like I said, I don't want to limit anybody to anything. You could do whatever you want. So we have the group, which is like our kind of like resource base. We have this gathering that we have uh, once a month, once a month. And I kind of want it roaming like the 23rd. It's just tomorrow I'm, I'm doing something. Um, I think that would be kind of interesting, but I know it might be weird for everybody else i'll see we don't have to necessarily put anything in in stone but um i think for for makes this saturdays at around this time works for you right um yeah i mean it, it works for me how about nikki is it too late for you yeah in answer to your question i mean i am flexible um, but yeah, if it's a, a late one, weekends are generally better for me because then I don't have to get up and do the school run thing. Um, cause I have to be up pretty early. It's sort of like my time half past six in the morning, sort of through the week. So it works better for me because, and I, you know, I'm a bit of a night owl, but with all that said, yes, yeah, so that works for me. All right. So, um, I'll see moving forward, but so we'll keep it Saturday at 4.20 Pacific time. But I think that maybe the, we'll have like another uh, one that roams. I just think it's just kind of interesting to have a roaming date at like the, being the 23rd just for shits and giggles so I could pull the cosmic trigger. <laughs> uh, just for my own self. Um, but okay. Okay, so, you, you know, I just want to to voice that to you guys, especially I'm glad uh, all three of us are in the same in the same imaginarium space. But did you want to read whatever you wanted? Did you write something? I, I did. I did, but it was just on that same note. Um, I've been kind of writing on it because of the ethics project. Yeah. Um, what, what I was going to say is, the, the clip that you, I mean, the passage that you read, type it up and put it in a post. Then you can read whatever you want to. And then, you know, like moving forward, I think it'll be interesting if we have like a, a collaborative collective thing that we like write for mm -hmm. it. And then maybe uh, Nikki will, will read it. But, you know, moving forward, Anything is possible, but for, like, the time being, we basically, you know, kind of integrate the source material into our heads. So then, like, later, we're just, like, remixing it without, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think yeah. the important part of anything is the integration part. And I think this is what the process of, like, taking notes or rewriting things of uh, writing a poem or doing an artwork is that you have to like integrate whatever that idea is into yourself. So then that you could project it out. And I think a lot of what, what fails us, you know, we're talking about knowledge and, and all this kind of stuff is that you study it, you know, like in school, but you don't ever like integrate like the essence of that, as using it as a lens so then you can navigate reality with that like perceptual lens like okay let me put this lens on let me put that lens on systems thinking po poetic ranting uh psychedelics uh whatever it is you know what i mean like there's all sorts of lens to look at how you could process information how you could express yourself how you could um, take in information, how you could handle yourself in all sorts of different situations. And I think, um, at least for me, I find that the most interesting and most um, effective way to navigate the information 
um, grid. It's weird because, like, I've noticed I've noticed in the past quite often when people bring different things to the table, somehow they all kind of somehow magically synchronize or something works. Like today, I was just messing around after I'd done all like the, the DIY stuff in my house. I thought, oh, what can I do? And I thought I'll just create a bit of music and. I went onto this funny little app and I was just on this little mixing desk thing and I was making these kind of, I was thinking about Generation X and I was thinking about the raves and things we used to go to that kind of started in the late 80s and sort of through the 90s, the early 90s. And I was trying to sort of recreate this kind of old school sounding music. Um, and then I posted the link in the in the thread, the Team Human thread, and Dan, you were like, oh my God, it kind of goes, <laughs> it goes with the gif, the walking gif. This is not a loop. It, but that was just an example of what of what I'm saying is that quite often when you just kind of do weird stuff, somehow it kind of connects and it comes together. These things weirdly, coincidentally, if you like, they come together and they're, and they're like, oh my God, they, they go really well together. It, I find that that usually works when people just do stuff that they wouldn't normally do, or it's kind of, it's not too forced in any way, if that makes sense. It's just kind of a natural thing. And then it all kind of comes together really nicely. Yeah, it's, it's interesting when that works out, you know, like you were, you were reading about the different generations. And so as I, not just from reading Team Human, but uh, this ethics project and conversations that I've had uh, with my world religions professor and students in that class, as well as, you know, reflecting on the sociology professor and, and wondering really how much of it is generational and how much of it is, you know, passing down the knowledge of our past generations through neural networks you know like everything we know you know innately we learn by our social conditioning early on and that is embedded in the neuropaths of our brain in a way that you can take a child out of their biological environment and place them in another one and they will still have very specific characteristics and traits and, and behaviors that you can't break them of because it's so deeply embedded. That's why, I mean, for me, personality disorders are very interesting because one of the personality disorders that they've seen, you know, antisocial personality disorder, they can see that conduct disorder and everything in a child who's been adopted. And I believe it's, it's twice as difficult for the adopting parents just because they don't expect it. They don't expect those behaviors where if you are raising a child that, you know, you created, then you see yourself in their behavior sometimes. There's certain things my kids say or do, and I'm like, oh, God, that was so me as a kid. And it's shocking, but it's also slightly expected. Yeah, it makes me think as well with this these kind of, you know, labels like the silent generation before the baby boomers and then the Generation X and millennials. Is it that we were programmed that way? Hence, there's these now these labels, these descriptions. You know, was it by design? You know, if there was like the powers that be or the cabal or however way you want to look at it, did they have this plan of this kind of programming system? Because obviously where they were directing humanity, where they were wanting us to go, which was perhaps not a great thing, not in any way, shape or form, positive or good for humanity. You know, I was thinking about that the other day, thinking, was it, is it by design or, or is it something that's passed down through the generations? But there's definitely a generational thing because you know, it's in the DNA, it's passed down, you know, and the same as sort of skill sets and things like that. You might be naturally good at art or music or 
you might be a brilliant mathematician or something like that and that can be generated that can be a, it within the genes so it, it's kind of both but it's yeah it, it makes me think like you're saying rose it's obviously something in the brain and it passes is it a consciousness that gets passed down that is connected into the dna hence these characters i would it's funny you say about your children because Lizzie did something today and I, I, I didn't say anything, but I just thought to myself, oh my God, that's that. It immediately triggered this memory from when I was about seven. She was doing this weird dancing, <laughs> just being an eight year old, you know, just being random, which is really in the imaginarium she was being sweet. And I was, it, it triggered a memory that from being seven years old. And I was like, oh my God. How could she have learned that from me? She couldn't have learned it. It was something that was obviously within her natural characteristics or her personality that she was kind of born with to do that. Really weird. Yeah, it's it's so amazing. Like, and and there are things like my kids were not raised with their father at all. I mean, he was not there. None of them have had a father in their life. And so it's interesting because I did know their fathers, you know, I'm, I'm a very thorough observer when it comes down to learning people because of my past, I've had to be that hypervigilant. And so even in my shortest relationship where my, my oldest son came from, there are certain things his father or his father's family did or say or, or acted. And it's just like, oh my gosh, that did not come from me. Is, is just amazing to me, and especially my two-year-old. He he does the shimmy, and I'm like, that that is Puerto Rican dancing right there, like what his dad would do when he just had, you know, the beat hit him just right. He would do the shimmy, and I'm like, oh, my God, it's Ari and his dad at the same time. You know, it was so crazy to see that when you know he's never had that influence he's never even observed it you know the most he's done is watch Spanish TV with me when he was very small it's just amazing how much passes through our brains and through our DNA and in our mitochondria even I mean the mitochondria is what is responsible for gene expression and I don't know, the more I study, the more I'm just in awe of, I guess, everything, you know, all of life. Oh, so Tori, I didn't tell you, but I got a job offer at the college. What's the job offer? Um, Just like tutoring in the writing center. Yeah, but it's writing. So, but the the professor that wants to hire me. He is the English comp, comp one and two, and then he's also creative writing and script writing, <laughs> of all things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we could start producing our show, our fake reality show. Yeah, maybe he can give me some pointers on my writing, but he offered to, you know, read over my work anytime and whatnot. Anyways, I mean, well, okay, kind of going, building upon that, there, there's something interesting. Um, what Meg was was writing earlier, that I think can be this whole other thing, and it's about. And Doug has wrote an article on this, but we could do our own thing with this, and it's about, which kind of goes full circle. Instead of the revolution, it's a renaissance. And retrieving from our past, either our past DNA in our own heritage or the further along of all humanity, getting to some kind of essence, which which I like to play with, uh, listening to the heartbeat of the universe, retrieving back this stuff that we need to be fully human and maybe constantly asking ourselves that question of what does it mean to be fully human? What does it mean to be part of this lineage of all of life? Um, 
I was writing something about this. I don't I don't think I put it here. But if I could get it, it's really short and it was actually a response to somebody. But um they were arguing about uh petty stuff. <laughs> and um I decided to write a poem mixing the both viewpoints. And I'm like, okay, you're right and you're right, but let's put these two things together. Anyways, and it's kind of, uh, it's short. It was on Twitter, so it had to be short, which I kind of like that restriction sometimes. Anyways, it's really quick. Revenge of the Lizard Brain. Chaos configurations of the trickster god. Ends never justify the memes. Subvert perception with a single uh, clever twist. Unify the whole weird intuitive sense. We carry the book of life. Crack open a page and breathe. Take all of life into your being. And I like that part of so, subvert perception with a single clever twist. Unify the whole weird intuitive sense. And we get stuck on uh, phrasing something, some type of ideology or whatever. And we forget that, that this phrasing is... Uh, the word is like a key to open up to this intuitive sense of what we have within us. We all carry the book of life within us. And we get confused or whatever. And if we get to this kind of weird intuitive sense, then it's not an intellectual process of of thinking about what is the right answer, but it's, it's about being that right answer for that moment in that, in that given frame, frame of time. And these are, um, it, once again, these, these are all just words to point to this thing, but I always go back to one of my, um, kind of connecting to something I was talking to Nikki about, was she she was talking about having a dream where the Lost Boys was um, in Santa Cruz, and I'm like, oh, Santa Cruz is my psychedelic birthplace, and I I call it my psychedelic birthplace because when we hippie flipped there one time, and that was the moment where I had the felt experience of the whole Earth being a living entity and me being like a cell inside the the um, the Mother Gaia. And that I was just part of like this continuum of all of life. Now I knew that as an intellectual concept because I read uh, Lovelock's um, book Gaia um, and other things similar to this. Uh, reading like you know Native American uh, mythology and uh, my Taoist stuff and all this kind of stuff. I knew it kind of intellectually, like oh yeah, you know systems thinking the world, you can view the world as a living entity and that I'm a part of the continuum of life. But it was just an intellectual concept. It wasn't until that moment where I was like, holy fucking shit, the whole earth is breathing and I'm a, just this little uh, cell within it and there's something greater and more uh, dynamic and beautiful that I'm a part of. And it's, it's always there, but I, I for whatever reason, I didn't realize it until that moment. And th that's like a lesson and story that I keep with me all the time. It's like to to constantly remind myself that truth is, is always there, whether I want to realize it or not. <laughs> and um, a lot of times I, it's, it's not, but in rare, fun moments like this, I, I'm able to retrieve that again. And um, that's something fun to always dance with and something we could um, always play with, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like, a, I was thinking, it's like the renaissance of humanity, isn't it? <laughs> really, it's kind of the whole human collective renaissance, however that, would play out I'm not quite sure how that would play out but it kind of seems to be happening I mean you know I'm not really a fan of um 
contrary to, to some of the things that I talk about, it might seem as though I am, but I'm not really a fan of the new age kind of thing because I think a lot of it is um, all a bit sort of sensationalised and over the top and, you know, uh, turning it all into a bit of a business, you know, or, or another religion type thing, which I'm, I'm not really into. But um, people would say that the Renaissance is kind of like people waking up, this awakening, collective awakening of people. It does definitely seems there definitely seems to be some kind of shift in people's consciousness. You know, I find that even people that um, <clears throat> would just think the sort of things that we discuss on Infinite Imaginarium and even on minds in general, the sort of discussions that crop up and from various posts and things. I know people that would just they just couldn't handle it. It would just be the weird, it would just be too weird for them. But even some of those people speaking to them, you know, on a sort of a I don't want to use the word normal level because I don't really know what normal is. I, I don't think there's any such thing as normal, but you know, the talking about the weather type conversations, I'm noticing more people are asking questions or they're saying, Oh, did you see that weird thing on the news the other night? Or it's like just tiny little things. But then, you know, the, the world has gone so mad of late, which I think is a good thing ultimately that it would be difficult for people to not notice. <laughs> I almost find it weird that people, the people that don't notice, I'm thinking, how can they not see stuff? But then that's obviously to do with the state of consciousness. You know, like we've discussed in the past on past shows and stuff, the type of programming people have got in their head determines what they decode as their reality and what's actually happening. So I sometimes sit there thinking, well, I, I can see this. To me, to me, this is so clear and obvious. But then I'm thinking another person who's got a different program running in their brain, they decode that completely differently to the way I decode it. And I think that's why a lot of these discussions and arguments happen between people, because they perceive something in a totally different way. Well, that's obviously stating the obvious, but they perceive it in a totally different way and they're desperately trying to get the other person to look at that thing or whatever, whatever it is they're discussing through their lens you know their eyes of how they're viewing it and most of the time that's complete it's like a futile exercise and a kind of a waste of energy having those kind of debates and arguments and in the I mean having a debate and a discussion is one thing but Quite often I've noticed these threads, they turn out to be people who are trying to force the other person to see their point of view, which is kind of wrong in a way. I don't think you can force anybody to see your point of view, but you can obviously put everything on the table, what your belief is. And then it it can be a debate, it can be a discussion, and people can disagree respectfully with one another as well. Yeah. Well, you know, this is this kind of goes into the whole thing, what I've always tried to do with Imaginarium, and hopefully to uh, bring that, well, whatever we do with Team Human. For me, I think what's more interesting is, like, solidifying that way of perceiving things, of how you process that re reality basically and how you integrate that within your own being but then th the kicker is how do I communicate that or express it in a way that can be heard and felt and like this is a more interesting process dilemma paradox fun play work configuration that I've I find of how I want to orientate the way I work with these projects that I that I that I want to do and what I how I work with you guys and how I want to move forward and find more people that want to work in this space so like how do we you know, our frame, our resources of references, our resources of communing with each other, 
about what we find interesting, of what books or what music or what movies or even our daily stories and how those, which kind of goes back to what you were saying. I think this is why I find it important for Team Human. I think it creates this frame of reference, this ground level that we can bring other people in and say, hey, uh, the initiation, hey, this is kind of where we come from. This is kind of how we want to operate. If you find this interesting, come and play with us. If not, then there's there's tons of other stuff for you to do. And we're, and I, you know, I don't care about trying to convince anybody of anything. But hopefully later, if someone engages with our videos, engages with us on in the group, engages us all a myriad of different ways, you know, we all have our, our, our strengths. Um, and there's all sorts of different tools that we could use. And if they engage and we, you know, engage with them and we find, okay, this is a good faith actor. This is someone that we could invite into the group and then engage with them and see the fun and play can be had. And the question is always, can we keep it continuously being more sustainable? And can we continue keeping it, pushing it further? But I, I think for now, it's continuing laying the groundwork and creating kind of a creative flow of us. I think us three work together good in a weird, indirect, direct way. And for for the most part, we we find ourselves even when we're not engaging with each other, oddly enough, on a similar page with each other. And um, if we could um, have more of of that with more people, and I and I know it's hard, and I never really um, let that bother me too much about if someone can't make it uh, my phrase is always this is the fucking internet um if you got to do real life shit do it of course <laughs> yeah but uh but hopefully you know we plant our our flag in the ground and that there's something somewhere and something always here for us to kind of like our creative home base and uh, hopefully we can make this, you know, space that. Not a safe space, but a creative space. <laughs> I think, like, the discussions that we have online, just chatting in the comments and stuff, as we all put our ideas forward, it creates rapport. So, so new people that come along with their ideas, they can connect with us. It, you know, it creates that rapport, and then they feel more comfortable yeah because I don't want to use the term safe space either but they feel more comfortable because you know it's like I was saying the other day that it would be really good if if people could come out of the artist closet <laughs> you know they could come out they're not going to be fearful because there's so many people that get scared or they think oh god you know I can't compete with that person or that person's a better artist than me or they do better mixes than me or whatever people get this thing in their head that they're not good enough. And that's what I really want to try and eradicate that completely. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm that, even, I'm even thinking of dropping even that label and says, I'm human. You're human. Do you want to have some fun? Here's some jump rope of ideas that I'm playing with right now. Yeah. Can you jump in and have fun? <laughs> and it could be like, you know, Elliot wouldn't necessarily consider himself an artist, but he has such great insight and way of communicating and engaging just in the comments that it's valuable and it's sometimes uh, gold. You know, when I engaged with him in, in the Minds uh, Poetry Group, I came up with a whole thing because he, he left that note from a book he was reading, you know? 
Um, but yeah. Anyways, I was interested. I know Curry Help was just kind of a, observing, but anything um, you want to talk about, Curry? Ideas, thoughts, concerns? Can you guys hear me? My internet connection is really unstable. Oh, no, we can yeah, hear you. It seems like it. But I've been noticing um, you dropping in and out. <laughs> yeah, I only caught about half the combo. That was normal weirdness from me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did have this one story that was on my mind that I could share with you guys. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Um, I was at this cafe, and this uh, the, the person who was working the counter said to a group, um, I hope you guys have a nice day or something like that. And then the person who she was saying it to said, um, we choose not to use gendered language uh, because she heard the word guy and took a bit of offense to it. She didn't like the term you guys. So I was on my computer and I just overheard that. So I immediately looked up where the word guy comes from, the etymology, and uh, I found out that the word guy used to mean chain. So somebody would say throw the guy, which would mean throw the chain. And then it came to mean the first link of the chain. So the first link of the chain was the guy. You can send the guy down and the rest of the chain will follow. And then, it got personified, so the word guy was a leader, uh, a guide. The word guide comes from the same lineage. Also, the word guido comes from the same lineage. Anyway, so it meant leader for a while. And then it became completely subverted, so people would say it sarcastically. And they would say, look at that guy, to like a hobo or someone who didn't, who didn't look like a leader. And then eventually it kind of just became normalized to mean a, a person, a human. And maybe more towards male, but all of the Latin language has been more towards male for some reason. Anyway, so I thought, is there something about that, about the, about fishing your way up the etymology of a concept that I think is really valuable? And I was looking up the etymology of team and of human, and those are both really interesting as well. Yeah, that, it is always interesting. In one respect, I get I get the kind of intention or sentiment that that person is trying to express, but then I'm like, you're missing the moment if you're getting hung up on a word, unless it's like totally crazy. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's just thinking too. that's just my radical idea about. I I I often make like jokes about this is when someone uses like foul language and and I'm like you know there I could I find a lot more things way more insulting than that like you know <laughs> like if they're um I don't know I'm trying to pull something you know when um, I guess for the internet it's like you have all these memes right and they could be pretty um shocking and whatever and I, I mean sometimes i feel like oh god what, what the hell is this but what i find most offensive about the meme culture is when they use really shitty um uh, and it's really pixelated i'm like jesus christ <laughs> you're like memeing like a hundred memes a day well, <laughs> at least have high quality visuals like god <laughs> use use a program do something you would think, you would think. I find that the most assaulting. Not the racism, but the, uh, not putting the effort and the quality of doing something. Jesus Christ. The, the, the shitty tackiness of it. Yeah. The utter crapness that, of it. That, That's what you find offensive. Yeah. I find it. The lack of, 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 of putting any effort into pushing an intention out there. That's uh, what I find I offensive. Comment. That's really okay. offensive. I find this meme offensive because it's just so crap. Yeah, because it's shitty. <laughs> what is it? The 1990s? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Stop using uh, paint <laughs> to do your fucking memes, assholes. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and of, of course, there there is real language and framing that is designed to, I guess, trap and and uh, trick perception. But once again, I think 
it kind of comes up to where where I'm at and where I like it is is playing. You know, going back to um, stuff that I steal from Douglas Rushkoff, program or be programmed. Like if you're not like hacking, creating, thinking, then you're being programmed. If you're not the programmer, then you're being programmed by whatever yeah, even, words, media. Even yeah. the use of guys can be because we've evolved it to guys and girls when we tried to be more inclusive at one point. And, I mean, that was... What's the word for that? Like, where... Is it patronizing? Is patronizing to women? Because guys and girls, like, instead of boys and girls, and and I'm a... I'm a Grown ass woman, you know, I don't get offended, but you know, like if I was presenting that perspective, so I, I kind of get where they're coming from as far as like it's gendered, but I do think we need to focus more on the etymology of things and and understanding where they come from and and shaping our vocabulary to match genuine speech patterns and not what we think these words mean and and becoming offense offended by things that we don't fully understand. On like the subject of memes, um, and it kind of, um, it made me think of it, what Curry was saying um, when he overheard the conversation. I quite often see people posting these sort of quotes that allegedly these famous people said, you know, like an mm-hmm. Albert Einstein mm-hmm. quote or something like that. And quite often you get these people rocking up on the thread and they're like, how do you know he he or she actually said that? And they get really annoyed about the fact that there's no proof. And then somebody would come back and say, well, it doesn't really matter. I just agree with what they're saying on this meme. So it doesn't really matter whether Abraham Lincoln said it or whoever said it. I just agree with what was being said. And it was like you were saying, Satori, that when people get hung up on these weird little things, they get all annoyed about things. It takes them out of the moment or takes them away, you know, in, in the case of the meme, it's taking them away from the reason why somebody shared it. Because I, I think with memes, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. They can be very negative programming because they literally flash up on the screen and, you know, the human brain can scroll through quite a lot in a, in a sort of a trance-like state in a short period of time. That's all going into their brain. So that could potentially be negative. But also, like you were saying, memes are very, they encapsulate something in in one image, a meaning or, or a sentiment or something. And that can also be really positive. So I'm in a bit of a on the fence about memes. I don't completely hate them, but I or think they're bad. I think they can yeah. be negative in one way, but they can well, also yeah, be very positive. This, you know? this, this kind of goes into this you know, more complex thing. So, you know, the meme itself is it's like a single unit of an idea. Uh, and then we have memes, the, the, the internet culture of memes, right? And anything, uh, songs, movies, memes, go, that goes gets popular, goes viral, tends to be something that that triggers this kind of base level um, animal of uh, fight or flight sex death stuff and um, you know it's so easy to make a booty shaking song go viral but can you make a song about you know the fear and trembling at the abyss uh, listening to the heartbeat of the universe, can that song go viral? Um, you know, I think you know the highest form of art is kind of when those two worlds kind of collide. When you get like a, you know, Prince or David Bowie who able to get something to go viral that has this layer deeper meaning of it, but it does tend in popular culture to have this more base level hollowness of just triggering these kind of instincts within people uh it it tends to be that way it doesn't necessarily have to always be that way but that's that's something too later or deeper that i feel for my own self 
which came to me in a dream, but it also stems from um, Saul Williams. Uh, when I when I had a dream that I was at this hip hop comp street festival thing, and I was kind of uh, getting picked on, really. <laughs> and then I literally went on a soapbox and had this whole rant about expression and hip hop and stuff. And then I ended it. It's like, why can't you say something deep and have a dope ass beat? And uh, that's the thing that's always in my mind. Um, it's stripped from Saul Williams, but um, there is something to that, that like a later Vance form that hopefully, you know, I think for sure is within our collective grab of if we keep on grinding away at reality, not, not necessarily cognitively like trying to do that, but if we keep on exploring and expanding ourselves, and then, like, collectively being able to grow and dance with each other. You know, I was kind of mentioning this to to Nikki a few weeks ago when we were talking, is that I found with my exchanges with you, Rose, that my own personal expression has grown to this, like, whole way, other way of, of going about things. Like when I was trying to write you a proper letter, like I literally couldn't write like Nick, uh, <laughs> Nikki wrote me a proper letter, uh, <laughs> but I couldn't write normally. I guess I had to like switch between like internal dialogue, poetic expression, analyzing myself. <laughs> that was just how now is my norm, not my normal sense. Of and that has been through this whole exercise relationship that I've had with you and with other people too in um, the Minds Poetry group, and that has like integrated within myself that that's just how I communicate now, you know. And I think that's um, great. <laughs> I have, I have a letter I'm writing. It's the same way. Like, you know how I write to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm still writing it, so. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I hope it's not too long. I got to read all that shit? <laughs> yeah, and look at my pretty pictures and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I, I actually have to... I've been having this idea... Yeah, put it down. But anyways, you know, there there is this thing that Mac was doing, and um, he like tagged me in it, and I read it. And um, but there's this, I guess it's called Wiki Letter, and it's basically oh. like this, like public letter. And so like you know, someone writes the first part, and there's like an exchange, um, which I find interesting, and it may be, and it may be a tool that we could use. Like a open letter to whatever, whatever we we you know. There's all you know how my mind works. I always push out these like little units of uh, open letter to the others. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. And <laughs> and that we could have this like ongoing communication. What what we're already doing here, but maybe like distill it in a nice, worked out way, um, that is continuously getting mulled over, and we could kind of write this collective letter to the others, which will be a, a nice, interesting thing to do. I think a lot a lot of stuff, and I think it's it's already moving there. Um, you can never really pin down what humanity's doing generation culture society you know and one end you have fucking uh mean culture and people watching short clips and reading headlines and not reading full articles but then yet you still have people doing long form conversations on podcasts and doing um events and having all sorts of different things that people are doing um, great music, shitty music, whatever it is, it's it's always there's always this strange dynamic of of that. But I I think that's a kind of interesting tool, which this is something else that we are retrieving once again, right? 
is writing actual letters and sending actual postcards. And just the the act of doing that, I think, is just um, interesting and fascinating. <laughs> like, it just it, um, it feels... Do you reckon um, Mac would be into the letter writing thing? I reckon he would. Oh, He'd yeah, he probably the... would. Mac, he's on... Um... He's like lost in hyperspace. <laughs> <laughs> He's even more off the planet than you, Dan. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he <laughs> is totally away with the fairies. Yeah, no, I it love the It's great. Did, I don't know if you, you guys should uh, look on his channel and um, uh, maybe I'll tag you guys or something. But it, it's pretty interesting what he's doing in that letter, and then it's based off of this article he wrote or something. But I wrote a response back to that article. But, you know, thinking about letters and doing that the wiki letter thing, which is something, too, that um, I think for my own self, for us, I think we're all around in the same page, is um, so I response back and it was kind of uh, my like poetic response to everything and trying to distill it but I, I I know there's more ground to mine there and I'm more that I could um, say and maybe even more that I could distill into phrases and there's a there's a whole tapestry that uh, I I need to that I could that I can get in there and express. But I think that's what the, that 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 thing forces us to do, you know. Um, we're so fleeting with our, you know, making a comment here and then the letter it fly away. stops you from being like lazy. Yeah. I think when you, it's kind of that lazy online kind yeah. of. I can't be bothered to answer that person. I'll just add an emoji. Yeah. Because I no, but get, sometimes. Like, my I my little that. ghost guy is exactly how I feel, <laughs> and he expresses me perfectly. That no words could do. I like that little ghost guy. He, the shot, he, feel, yeah, the he shot feels like my spirit out of not, him. Actually, <laughs> he feels like my spirit the out of him. Ghost. I'm going to write a poem called "The Shot Ghost." That's <laughs> due to everything. Oh, God. But yeah, it definitely forces you to to not be lazy. Because when I was writing the letter, I had to keep changing things. I was like, oh, my God, I've actually got to think. I can't just use an emoji. I can't yeah. just put something to add the meaning. And, you know, that's the same thing with, uh, like, a postcard. Well, I mean, you can be lazy with the postcard, but I want uh, every time I start or do something when, I, when I'm sending it to Rose, I think, oh, wait, there's a lot more that I could do. And then, like, force me in that limited space to like distill more into it so that the little that I do send can like hit her <laughs> in a way. Trouble and, is you can, there's not enough space on a, on a post. Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's the challenge, isn't it? That's what I want to sit down well, and get everything you know, the meaning. It's, in a small it's so space. funny doing it because yeah. then, you're like, oh fuck this! I could do, I could write something really easy, and then you're like, you sit there and you're like, you write something, and then you're like, oh, I really didn't say anything. I need more space. <laughs> what the fuck yeah. happened? <laughs> I need more <laughs> postcards, and then that, like later, it's like, oh shit, I should just write her a letter because this is not working. And yeah, then like nothing. three, three postcards in, I was like, oh, now I get it. Like now I'm doing good. <laughs> I should have yeah. never sent those other ones. <laughs> <laughs> burn them just burn those fuckers <laughs> no there's never enough space on a postcard it's a nightmare yeah it's it's all it's all I mean this is something Tibet Curry's uh, got kicked out or whatever um, but this is what his whole thing was with the uh, the scribble like scribbling he even had a whole group about this about like thinking of things to like draw even that, um, even if you don't really draw, is it for for anybody interested in expression or even your own mind? You have to like reorientate your mind to see the blank canvas and where I'm going to put this stuff and all this kind of stuff. And then like, and you know, the beautiful part is sometimes 
when you're just doing it, you're like, oh, I didn't know that's what I wanted to express. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I thought it all started off as shit. <laughs> And that's kind of where the coloring started coming. I was like, oh, this is a little boring. I need to put something. And then I got way more interested in the coloring than I did the writing. And then I got lost for three days in the coloring. And I said, no, Daniel, you need to stop. You can't. <laughs> you can't binge coloring for a week. That's ridiculous. That's the problem with that. <laughs> You've got a problem, uh, Daniel. You need Get your to know when to stop. Together. <laughs> That's the biggest problem is not knowing when to stop. I've, I've oh, yeah. met, in well, my opinion, completely fucked up some brilliant pieces of artwork because I just couldn't leave it alone. And then I just do one wrong move and I'm like, oh, I fucked it up. Now I've got to start again. And then I just get all those white paint and just go over the canvas to start again because I can't, I can't stand the fact that I've ruined it, this little bit that I've ruined because I couldn't leave it alone. It's so hard to not, and and it's like certain artwork is never finished. That there is no end. It's like you could just go on forever with it, and then it just really all that happens is it just keeps morphing into different things. So it's kind of like deciding: do I want it to be this image overall, or am I going to change it into something else? It's a bit like life, isn't it? It's just like: am I going to transform it into something else by adding this other piece of the? image adding this extra bit on there that's going to make it completely different to what it was before it's like it's like making decisions that's the thing art is just like making those decisions where am I going to put things what position am I going to put them in and I think that's like with uh I don't know about visionary art visionary art's a bit weird it's a bit different you can go into a mode and channel all sorts of weird stuff but even with traditional are you know if you're doing like a traditional landscape it's all like a making a bunch of kind of decisions as to where things are going to go I think I'm going to put a tree there I'm going to working out the positioning of things um and I kind of find that sort of artwork really boring I, I, I like to be able to just be completely free with it but even when I'm doing the free sort of type stuff it's you can just make mistakes and then even then, they're subjective. Somebody could walk in and go, I don't think that's a mistake. I think it's you've improved it by putting that on there. I mean, that's that's the, the real challenge, which I guess just how my mind works. I have this way of thinking of holistically, I guess. Anyways, thinking about that tension between the focus of... of the energy, but also to not limit it so you could dance and play and see things emerge, which I find the most interesting. But you, if you don't have that tension of both, then you know, you, you can't, like, you know, there's a, a fine dance, which is always so frustrating because when it comes out good, it it's so effortlessly, and then it could turn on a dime and then you're struggling find something <laughs> and you get so frustrated you're like what happened <laughs> the worst thing is it's like when you wake up in the morning and you have this like amazing idea and then literally within five minutes of you getting up out of your bed and making oh, yeah. a coffee or something the idea is gone you're like where the fuck has that idea just gone that i had because yeah. you actually I, I i woken up in the morning and i thought right i'm gonna i'm gonna write this down i've just come up with this thought this amazing thought and then I don't write it down straight away, and then I forget what it is. It's really annoying. Yeah, and see, I, I think that. I think that that's part of this uh, tension and thing that that I guess you know um, we could do better at, or at least in my own thinking of doing better at, which I kind of always done, but I I think pushing you guys and um, to to do this as well was, you know, there's the same tension that's happening in this conversation of us veering off course, then coming in and then coming to ideas and dancing around things. But, um, you know, when I later clip it said, okay, this is a good little seed of an idea, but us going back later when we have time to like have that idea ferment more in our mind, write stuff in the comments 
think of music or songs or visuals or whatever. And that, you know, we let these things kind of set in the group so that, oh, maybe this is a segment later. Because I, I see what we do later, and it's, it's kind of always how I see it. There's one part which is just this kind of the team human gathering where we just come and we use some of Douglas writing or whatever happened in group or things that we wrote, talk about our lives, talk about things that we're thinking about. We talk about the process. We talk about poetry. We talk about whatever, whatever, right? And then what we need to do is create those pieces for the mixtape or the mosaic that I build later. And I think uh, part of it is focusing in on different pieces and making them more interesting. Like the idea of the Renaissance or retrieving our humanity, the the weird poetry that we have here, the, the, the stuff about our own DNA or, and, you know, the, or what Curry said about words. And there's a whole tension of retrieving the big picture of humanity but also retrieving the little bits and pieces of words and where they come from and how they make up the tapestry of knowledge, of communication, of expression, and how us together as a team can make the weird more fun and interesting. And we kind of always kind of dance in this tension of all this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, oh, definitely. As a side note, which I'll be right back, but I got to check on my my ramen broth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I lost my headphone. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm always having these little ideas in my head, and then I forget about them, and it's really frustrating. I'm like, when I was younger. Um, we had a piano and I used to like create, I just used to play by ear a little bit and I was always composing these little tunes and then forgetting what they were. Yeah, <laughs> like, I did that too. Because I, I couldn't teach you. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I can't read music or anything like that. I just used to listen to things and then copy the tunes, but I wasn't yeah. like amazing or anything. It was just little, simple little things. But then I'd create my own shit stuff and then I'd yeah. sometimes create what I felt was really good. I would be really proud of it. And then I couldn't write it down or log it anywhere because mm -hmm. I didn't have any recording equipment. This is like when I was a kid. So there was no yeah. kind of technology to do it. And I couldn't write music. So I couldn't write it down in a, in a music format. And I think, I think all I, those situations, where did they go? Just went into the ether. <laughs> yeah. So I, I can read music and oh, it's wow. not in addition to playing by ear and I could never write it down when I did play it. Like I would, I would come up with these things. I would just play. And one day I was on the, I was on the phone with Seek and I was playing this song and he's like, Oh, wow. That sounds like, you know, this French band we both listened to that I introduced him to. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, I guess it does. You know, like I was just playing this, whatever I felt like playing, you know, and, and I used to yeah, do that. Yeah. It was funny because I was actually thinking about getting another piano because of that. Like, oh my god, I mean, just... I just, it's so weird. That's exactly what I've been thinking lately. Well, I've actually been thinking yeah. about it for a year, but I'm trying to figure out where it's going to go in my house. Because I, I really, really miss just being able to just sit there creating machines or working stuff out. I used to find it probably, I mean, obviously, I'll do my artwork. It's so soothing. I think, to be yeah. honest with you, if I got piano, it would take over from the art the other art forms of art, I'd just be doing that all the time. Because <laughs> this fun, funny little music thing that I went on, it was just like a stupid little music app. Oh, yeah, what program were you using? Oh, it was that, it was just that music, was it Music Maker Jam? Music Jam? It was just, it, it was actually really cool. It was kind of quite sophisticated, really, some of the things you could do on it. But I just got totally into it. I was like, I thought, I just want to do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you, like, sample other music, or how does, how does the program work? Basically, it's just, like a, it's just like a little program. You can, I think, there's, like, a pro version where you can add in your own music clips. You can put in vocal, your own vocals, and then you can start mixing. There's, like, a mixing desk. 
and then you can like like you know like a virtual one and then you can mix all your stuff into that as well um but they've got all these like little programs and little samples of different music and drum beats and pianos and it's actually quite cool they've got a lot of stuff on there and you literally just go on the desk and you just mix all the beats in. Obviously, you have to do that by yourself. It doesn't give you any kind of ideas of how to mix it. You just literally, it's just completely experimental. So you could come up with something really shockingly garbage. Or, But what I liked about it was that they had all these little things on there that you could mix in that sounded really old school. And I thought, God, this is a bit like... It was reminding me as I was creating something, I was thinking, God, this is starting to remind me a bit of the music I used to listen to when I used to go to raves years ago. It was like this sort of old school kind of ambient style, hip hop, nations of different things. And I thought, yeah, this is really cool. So I'm going to go back on there. I'm going to look at the pro version and see what it's like. And and then I just didn't, I just downloaded it to my drive you know as an mp3 audio file and um, I thought this could be quite cool because you might be able to, to use some of these creations in your you know mashups and add some really cool visual imagery to it and stuff it could be quite a cool thing so but um I don't know how limited it is because I haven't gone into the pro version I don't know how much you can actually do with it yet because I literally just discovered it today and I thought music maker jam I think it's quite a well-known one um and I just thought right I'm going to just explore this and see how much you can actually do with it because uh, it could be quite a cool thing to just create your you know your own music to add into stuff and then I, the good thing about it is there is like a, set, a a bit on there where you can record your voice so I could mix my own voice in with the music so the music is original and then you know I could potentially read something but yeah, so it could be quite good. It could be quite good in that respect, because obviously there's this whole thing, isn't there, with music? You've got to be careful, you know, ripping stuff off YouTube and turning it into audio, and putting, you know, you've got to be careful with the copyright and all that sort of stuff, haven't you? Oh, I don't, I don't give a shit. <laughs> no, well, to be honest with you, I've got. To... <laughs> I've got to this point now where I, people, I, I know a few, they're like, you shouldn't share that on on mine. You shouldn't say, you know, post this picture. Or you shouldn't put your face up or your neck. And I'm like, well, I don't care. I, I've got to this point. I don't care if they can, who can see me or I don't give a shit about any of that anymore. It's like I've become completely free of that fear of needing to hide away. Not so much about the pictures. I just, I mean, I don't like putting loads of, I'm not into having selfies and loads of pictures of myself all over social media platforms, but it's not because I'm scared about anything. It's just, I just don't like putting my picture up. But, yeah. Yeah. Ideally, or it would be really cool if we could get into a space where everything is kind of like sourced with, within our group of what I use. Yeah. What do you mean source of what we've created our own creation? Yeah. Like, um, you know, I use yeah. music from Future Humans or whoever else does music. I use yeah, visual yeah. from Perfect. Curry Hobo. Yeah. And, you know, also to which later, which I was trying to push and, and um, which we we could retrieve that um, project idea back is the, uh, what is it, Mi- microphone for humanity or something like that? Remember, uh, it was actually... Um, uh, Scotland, who came up with that idea? We had it. It's it's tagged on the top of the Infinite Imaginarium. What is the microphone? The megaphone of hope for the world. Remember that? Where we all kind of we have our our like whole poem there. Um, we could just record it. But I was also thinking if the visuals for that is sourced from everybody's um, individual, like you know, just come up with stuff and i mix that in but the yeah this i think when we get more people thinking in this way and we give examples that people will be like oh that's interesting and cool i could do that or i want to explore that and then they find through their own they 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 find where they fit in and like i of course i don't want to limit anybody to anything but i know that people will start with 
you know, filling in um, the own gaps of their own strength. You know, Curry actually did a really good intro for Bucket Full of Books. I don't know if you guys ever saw it, but I, like, invited people to to um, give me, like, you know, I, I think I said, film your own books. Uh, so, so I could have like a, a collage of stuff for the intro for a bucket full of books. And Curry, I think, was the only one who did it. And his, just by himself, was a full intro that I didn't even have to like edit. I would just, I even liked the the ambient mu- uh, noises that were, were happen- happening. Um, it was kind of almost perfect of what he did. And it was, I mean, a slight music behind it, and maybe just um, um, cleaning uh, or rendering the audio through a couple of um, simple filters to to really make it um, better in that sense, quality wise. But um, it was perfect what he did, <laughs> and basically what he did is he had like his like creative work shed. And it has like books and drawings everywhere, uh, but he has a blackboard and he wrote on there a uh, bucket full of books. And then him walking through his workspace with books and looking through books, and then putting a log into the fire. But it was just so interesting just to he- hear the actual chalk go on there and just like the first person view. Like it was just perfect and uh, how it was. I don't know if you guys ever saw that one. But like things like that, you know, that's where the real power is in creating with the team, creating the weird with the team. You know, those little gems that we 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 could mind and have fun with. But uh, yeah. Anyways, is there? Um, we could still hang out, but. I, to wrap things up as far as the the recording, is there any last comments, concerns, things anybody wants to bring up? The no, group, I can't the think team? of anything. Rose. I just think it's really good what you're saying, though, about you know getting all this original material on the table. It would be really cool. I love that. I mean, I'm already good. I'm already thinking of just simply using that that song that you did and. Having the the animated, um, this is not a loop. Uh, find find the others, create the weird thing. And you know what? I was also thinking of using another one, uh, a clip of it. You know, at the end of like TV shows and stuff, they said you know it's like a whatever production company, and they and they they have like a little thing, and then they put up a weird picture or whatever the name of their production company is. I was thinking of doing something similar, but like maybe occasionally having weird art. Like I was gonna put that that meme that you did, like at the end with the song, and just just have it there. And and later we could get more weird with it, of just <laughs> you know. I remember the old one that they used to was was like sit boo boo sit good dog. And they were like, I forgot. Oh, whatever. yeah, yeah, I know what funny you mean. You, you know what I mean? Like, we could do different things like that that don't necessarily some, have to do those, with, um, with a, a production company, but like weird Zen riddles. <laughs> some some, I'm, I'm kind of, some of them, like from the like the 70s and 80s, I actually, it's weird you say this because one night, this is about a year ago, I was, mm-hmm. well, I say night. I was up sort of like at two, three o'clock in the morning and I was on YouTube and I literally searched that up, you know, like the endings of things, you know, company logos and like these weird little music that they would play at the end and stuff, which anyway, I, I found a channel that had just loads of them just on a loop coming on. And some of them are like really weird, creepy, dark sort of sounds you know, with like the end logo at the end, you know, like you get it at the end of a movie or like you said, or a, a TV show or something. But, but yeah, I might post a few in the in the thread because there's some of them are really weird. But yeah, we could do a different kind of take on it. So we could do some weird little jingle or music, but then put something really profound at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be really cool. I like that idea. Yeah. 